I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to do anything of what you guys are doing. I mean, I would be completely homeless. But the only thing I could do in this country would be to be a general laborer or a carpenter's helper or a mason tender. Because those are really the skills that I learned. I didn't learn anything else. It's like my mother said. She walked through the comp company and said, well, this is great, David. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I said, holy mom. <laughs> anyway, this is your moment in history. The Nina Company now has some excess cash capacity, do we not? So how can we put that to work? How can we, how can we versus lingering on in waste? I see people not walking as quickly or as brusquely as they could. I see people avoiding difficult conversations, and yet we owe everything we have to the human creativity that people have brought up here. And there are a few people that are carrying the flag forward. And when I say a few, a lot more than there were five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and it keeps building. But it, it, the days of command and control are over. This is your game. Um, steady, intense, relentless innovation is essential to our survival. The task of the imagination is to work as if there was a crisis when there is no crisis. To really have attention, to, to get on it and get on it and do it well. So, I have a couple of other things here. Um, Niels Bohr was, by the way, he was another Danish guy. I really, I really like Danish physicists. Uh, this is what he said. He said everything valuable, uh, every valuable human being must be radical or be a rebel, uh, for he must aim to make things better than they are. So, so what I'm going to do is come up with an invitation. Uh, first, let me just say, <clears throat> our construction is not an object, it's not a thing. It's like a garden that needs to be worked every day, all day. Do you understand? That is, that is the context within which we work. The content is the specific job, the specific task. But the context is always, it's a garden. When do you walk away from a garden? Yeah. You, you, you keep tending. So, peer production. If you want some clues on peer production, you can talk to the Hezbollah. And the Hezbollah says there are two or three things we do. Number one, we swarm. Anybody know what swarming is? It's what antibodies do to infections. They swarm to it. It's not new. It started with Genghis Khan in the 12th and 13th centuries. You know how they blew through the wall, the Great Wall? It's only, it's only 30 meters deep. They put 5,000 people at one point. <laughs> blew right through, swarming. Wasps swarm. We lost a job in the mountains. And we couldn't figure out why we lost it. And somebody had, it was $400 cheaper than us, you guys remember the job? And then we got on the next one, and the next one was Trevor Mine, swarmed. Who was, a, who was a part of that? They're all working. They're all swarm. <laughs> did they swarm or did they not? I was a whole thing. There was a huge ship. A huge ship. So what's the difference between swarming and just doing the best you can? Um, on the first time we were reacting to requests. Reacting to requests the versus? Second time we were trying to think differently and how we could think and make sure we yeah. But when I say swarm, and I'm saying like all hands on deck, get there, leave no stone unturned, answer questions before they get asked. So swarming, I'm seeing the one day CDP in healthcare that had taken two and three before. The one day that's a swarm, jumping on a problem that we can't figure out how to solve. That's swarming. That's what peers can do. So that they can swarm. David, I just want to clarify. When you say when you first said swarming, I got the I got the picture of just throwing a lot of people at the issue. But now what I'm hearing you say is same number of people looking at it from a lot of different angles. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. But I'm saying it's also all hands on deck. Let's get out there. Let's get it going. Let's get going. It has to do with taking the initiative. 
Because I would argue that if you threw a lot of people at it, that could be wasteful. Anytime you throw people at anything, it's probably wasteful. The swarm I'm talking about is out of passion, out of concern, out of care for what we're about, for what our mission is, and what our role might be. And if we see we're doing something wasteful, boy, part of the rule is, hey, I'm wasted. I'm out of this. You know, because that doesn't work. So I'm assuming there's efficacy and efficiency in the swarm. Yes? It seems so, like to me what would make a swarm work is a common goal. I mean, well, everyone's focused at the same place it, it, and it, just go it, for it. it, it I can't exactly tell where Rambo was on this thing, except that and, and the Hezbollah sense of swarming was get people on it. Don't run away from a problem. If there's a problem, attack it. 